Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Now in today's video we're going to be talking about this Windows Millennium Edition or Windows ME or Windows Me, whatever the proper name for it is or whatever you want to call it. Now I've said a few times before on the channel, I like Windows ME, I think it's a sound little operating system and um, seems to get quite a bad rap, per, you know, even still these days, to the point where I think it's almost become a bit of a meme to, you know, go, oh, Windows ME was terrible or it crashed all the time or whatever. I don't really think that's deserved and um, it certainly seems to get that a lot compared to its brethren, to, to Windows 95 and Windows 98. Now, when you have a look around at uh, the different things that people are doing with 95 and 98, uh, one of the things that it seems people like to do is install them on a system that's built to the minimum um, system requirements for that operating system, you know, to see what it was like and try it out, see what people would have been faced with back in the day. Now, for example, I can remember me and a friend installing Windows 95 on a 486SX25 with just 4 megs of RAM. And that took like a whole afternoon. It was a horrible experience. And its minimum system requirements was just a 386 of some description. So, you know, heaven knows what that must have been like. So, yeah, there's people installing Windows 95 on 386s or 98 on a potato or whatever it is. But there's not a lot of love shown to um, Windows uh, Millennium Edition when it comes to this. So today, we're going to address that. We're going to install and try using Millennium Edition on a system that meets the minimum system requirements for it. But what are those minimum system requirements? Well, it kind of depends, I'm afraid. So when it comes to the CPU, if you wanted to use the built-in Windows Movie Maker, which made its debut with Windows ME, Microsoft recommended at least a 300MHz Pentium 2 CPU or better. I've also seen a 700MHz requirement for that floating around on some places on the internet. I'm not too sure on that one. Um, I only ever remember it being um, a... 300 uh, megahertz CPU, but anyway, that was for Movie Maker. We can do better than that. Now, Media Player 7, uh, which was also included with Windows ME, they recommended a Pentium 2 166 processor or better, but again, we can do better than that. The bare minimum CPU that we need, as we can see here on the specs, is a 150 megahertz Pentium or Pentium class CPU. Now likewise, when it comes to RAM, some of those programs like Media Player or Movie Maker, they had uh, recommendations or minimum specs of at least 64 megs of RAM. But again, the minimum for the operating system is just 32 megs of RAM. And likewise, when it comes to hard disk space, software uh, like what we've just mentioned had higher minimum amounts of free space. But for just the basic simple install of the OS, it was a minimum of 320 megabytes of free hard disk space. So those are the kind of key minimums um, that we need to think about. Uh, obviously, there are other things like we're going to need a CD-ROM drive to install it, though I don't think there's a minimum speed CD-ROM drive that you have to have. Uh, we're going to need at least a VGA or higher resolution monitor and graphics card. Uh, we're going to need some sound card and speakers, you know, if we want this thing to make a noise. Uh, but we'll get on to all that in a bit. So first, let's take a look at the system that I've got to, for us to use today, which most closely matches those minimum system requirements. So this is the system that we're going to be using. Now, to see where those kind of system requirements or minimum system requirements fit in for Windows ME, uh, you know, the general kind of timeline of hardware, uh, let me just tell you a little bit about this system. This is my sort of everyday type use um, system that I use for late DOS, uh, so mainly late DOS gaming, Windows 3.1 and the sort of early Windows 95 stuff. 
it's an AT class system and there's no sort of 3D acceleration in here. As soon as I come across a game that needs 3D acceleration from the graphics card, that's kind of my cutoff point for this system where I'd then run that game, say, on my Windows 98 system uh, instead of this. If you want to see that Windows 98 system, I'll put a link on the screen somewhere or down in the description. But yeah, the sort of takeaway is no 3D acceleration in here. It's a late DOS, Windows 3.1, Windows 95 type system. But yet yeah, that's the minimum system requirements type of sort of era, if you like, that we're going to be running Windows Millennium Edition on. So in here we've got an ABIT AB-PX5 AT motherboard. Now that's um, running the Intel VX chipset or the Triton 2 I think it was called if I remember right. Our CPU is a original Pentium 133 so we're going to have to swap that out and put a Pentium 150 in to match those minimum system requirements. Oh, and just to say, I am aware that you can use those um, switches during uh, setup to bypass the minimum system requirement check. But, uh, you know, the point of this video is not to try and find the sort of slowest or most minimum thing we can install it on. It's to see what it was like using those official minimum system requirements. Um, but yeah, anyway, CPU out, Pentium 150 in. We've got 64 megabytes of RAM on two 32 meg sticks. So again, we'll just have to take one of those sticks out to get down to 32 megs. Graphics, we've got uh, an original Matrox Millennium. So that'll satisfy our requirements of VGA or higher uh, resolution for that. We've got a network card. Um, the uh, original system requirements, a minimum of a 28 um, kilobit per second modem if you want to do any online stuff with Windows ME but we're not going to be doing any sort of online stuff with this and it's not really going to affect installing it or using it so that can just kind of stay in there and not do a whole lot. We've got a sound card so that this thing will make some noise. We've got a floppy disk drive and a CD-ROM drive and storage on here that's handled by this compact flash to IDE adapter so we'll unplug that and we'll put an actual hard disk in here. So again, we get this kind of proper, proper experience and we're, we're sort of properly meeting those minimum system requirements. So right, let's make those um, three quick tweaks and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, slight change from what you've just seen there uh, with the hardware being installed. Uh, I forgot that this board does not support hard disks bigger than 8 point something, whatever it is, gigabytes. So uh, that one that I put in, uh, that wasn't recognised. So instead, um, I found an old Quantum Fireball 6.4 gigs, I think it is, put that in instead and that's now working fine. So. We've got the tablet here, we're just going to use that as a stopwatch to time how long this uh, sort of installation takes. Um, we've got the disc in the drive, ready to go. Uh, I think uh, this, uh, it's an official disc, but I think it's only an upgrade version, not a, uh, not a full version, but fairly certain there is an old installer Windows 98 on this, uh, on this Quantum Fireball, so hopefully that, uh, that keeps it happy. So. Without further ado, just in case this really does take a long time, we'll start the stopwatch. And here we go. Obviously, I'm not going to make you watch all of this. Um, I'll just keep fast forwarding or cutting uh, bits out, uh, you know, as in, uh, um, you know, as needed, shall we say. Straight away, what's kind of odd is I'm noticing I have no mouse. Um, now this uh, this is a serial mouse, uh, not a PS2 mouse, because um, I've got 9-pin serial on the back of here, but no PS2 um, ports. 
I will check and make sure it's plugged in right, I'm fairly certain it is. Uh, but if not, we just have to uh, navigate the setup with the keyboard instead. So, let's accept the agreement and I'll stick the product key in. Okay, so it's now revised its estimate um, and it reckons this is going to be done in just 45 minutes. I'd be quite impressed if it manages to do that just um, on minimum hardware specification. I think it's already done its check to make sure that it was um, happy with the previous version of Windows. So, fingers crossed, I think we should be okay. No, we don't want a startup disk either. Thank you very much. Ready to be copying files already. We are flying through this. Copy me a mouse driver, please. I'd like that. Now, I think it goes without saying that Windows ME does not enjoy the best uh, reputation among the Windows 9X uh, operating systems. And, uh, I mean, this is one of those where I can kind of see why, but at the same time, I think a lot of that reputation uh, is, is pretty undeserved. I mean, I think you've got to look at this under kind of two scenarios. There was the people sort of using it, uh, you know, every day on their computers back in the day when this was uh, released. And there's the, uh, the people using it now or considering using it now as part of a retro, uh, you know, retro computer like this one is. Back in the day, one of the problems or one of the things that just seems to keep cropping up with Windows ME was, oh, ha, 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 it crashed all the time, etc, etc, etc. Now, I went out and bought Windows ME pretty much as soon as it came out and I put it on, uh, installed it, no problems, and I didn't find it crashed any more or any less than Windows 98 did for me. In fact, to be honest, Windows 98 didn't do that much crashing for me and this was definitely no worse. And I think a lot of that was to do with drivers. You see, Windows, uh, Microsoft are really pushing the kind of uh, the WDM drivers, the Windows device, uh, Windows driver model. I think that's what WDM stood for. They were the kind of newer version of the, uh, the drivers they replaced the older .vxd drivers which was the uh, which was the kind of older version um, i'm fairly sure windows 98 was compatible with wdm drivers but um, there was something to do with windows me that meant a lot of companies were having to release drivers for it so, you know new drivers for their hardware and i think there were just a lot of drivers out there that that would just rushed out or unstable or hardware that wasn't being given the correct drivers and that was causing crashing and yet people are understandably frustrated with that but that isn't the operating system's fault you know if you give it crap drivers you can't really hold it responsible for when it then falls over in a big heap you know and and this is the old days of you know windows 9x this isn't where you know one bit of your operating system crashes but the rest of it keeps chugging on anyway this is when you got to crash the whole lot falls down and you got to reboot and start again so yeah i think some of that reputation is a little bit unfairly earned but then likewise for myself i had a good experience with it so it's probably no surprise that i still really like windows me and yeah you, know, you know i liked it back then and i still like it now now, coming at that from the other direction, as in looking at using Windows ME now as part of a sort of retro computing setup, the biggest complaint that people seem to have with Windows ME in, the, in this sense today is its complete sort of lack of uh, you know, real mode DOS support. And I can totally understand that, but for me, it kind of depends what your retro sort of setup is. Now I'm fortunate enough to have more than one retro computer and I have different PCs covering sort of different sort of areas or different operating systems. So if I wanted to play some old DOS games, I wouldn't be running them on, uh, you know, on my Windows ME PC anyway. I mean, it's not normally this one, it's normally a different one. Uh, but, but anyway, you, you sort of get the point. So 
I think in that sense, it's not a problem. Now, if I could only have one retro PC and I was trying to sort of span as wide a range as possible in order to sort of cover the most time and be able to look at the most games, most different programs and so on, then yeah, I can see why you wouldn't want Windows ME in that situation. But I mean, this is, you know, this is right at the very end of the 1990s here, you know, and DOS was, you know, you know the, the DOS games had been kind of, um, you know, they'd been kind of done with for a little while now. Thinking back in the day, it didn't hurt me back then to uh, lose that real mode DOS support. I wasn't playing any DOS games back then. You know, you were, we were in that heyday of 3D acceleration with new graphics cards coming out every five minutes or whatever it was. And, you know, these really sort of quick, big leaps, you know, in what computers could do. So, you know, the, the, the DOS games had kind of been sort of consigned to the box under the bed at that point. They, they weren't getting used. Obviously, nowadays, it's good to look back and play all of those games. So... Yeah, if you've only got one retro PC, Windows ME is probably not the right uh, operating system. But if you've got a few, absolutely nothing wrong, I don't think, with, uh, with having it on one of them. And certainly using it back in the day, I think it was nice to have all these, uh, so, you know, the, the new features that came with it. I mean, th this brought us System Restore. Hey, it maybe only worked 50% of the time, but hey, if you were in the kind of situation where you were trying to use System Restore, you were probably screwed anyway. So what did you have to lose? Uh, likewise, much better USB support. You know, we had uh, later versions of uh, programs in there. Um, you had later versions of Media Player, if you were still using that, rather than Winamp or whatever. You had the movie editor in there for the first time various improvements under the hood uh, you know the, the scan disk and defrag the windows me versions of those are pretty much the best versions uh, that were released for 9x so yeah uh, incremental improvements definitely but um, i think they were certainly worth having back in the day or you know saw, saw no reason not to have them the you know the better usb port uh, usb support probably the uh, the main one there now, while I've been talking, I've just realised that this really does seem to have slowed down. This um, estimated time, each minute on that seems to be ticking down a lot slower than an actual real-life minute is. Um, yeah, we'll see. Could be in for the long haul. I think it said 46 minutes when it first gave its first estimate, and we're nearly at 15 minutes already. So, uh, let's, we'll see how that works out. I mean, speaking of speed, one thing that uh, taking out that real mode DOS support did was it gave Windows uh, ME better boot times, you know, faster boot times than 98. So again, back in the day when we were still running on hard disks, chugging away like this one is valiantly. Um, I don't think you can see the uh, hard disk LED just sort of down there, but you know, it's it's earning its money today. It's uh, it's putting a shift in. So yeah. Certainly back then, on limited hardware, faster boot times, again, I was all for that. So, you know, another good improvement that Windows ME bought, uh, or brought. So while it's installing, I've just been having a bit of a read through the old, um, what is it, the quick start guide. What's interesting about this is, um, chapter one, setting up Windows ME. Chapter two, oh, hang on, that's the wrong bit. Chapter two, straight in, get the internet, email, and messaging. Um, doesn't tell you how to do anything else first. It just tells you how to get online, you know, get on your email, get signed in with MSN Messenger, um, how to share your internet connection. Uh, that was another thing Windows ME did a little bit uh, better, if I remember. But yeah, um, I guess it shows that um, we were at that forefront, that kind of... Um, not the forefront, what do you call that, kind of steepest point of the wave where internet adoption in households was just sort of taking off like wildfire. So all of a sudden, um, straight away, it's front and centre. In fact, reading through this, everything is about, it's your digital lifestyle, it's online, it's, uh, you know, it, 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 the, the sort of 9X series of operating systems and now it, it's full on all about the internet and... Uh, yeah, 
I mean, I'd say we're only a few years past Windows 95, where internet doesn't get much of a mention in its uh, in, in its instruction manual, if, if I remember correctly. In fact, yeah, there we go. Chapter three is getting things done. So you only get things done after you've got on uh, on the internet. So yeah. Having said that, most of the getting stuff done chapter seems to be about getting help and support. So uh, yeah, make of that what you will. Oh yeah, that's another one of the um, benefits Windows ME. This was the first version of Windows we got with uh, Windows Update built in, wasn't it? For sort of that central repository for downloading updates to uh, to the OS. It's funny, I don't remember using that all that much, but may maybe this is just one of those things that, you know, you remember playing the games or, you know, messing about on the internet perhaps more than you do updating your operating system. Okay, nearly 27 minutes in and we're now ready for the first restart. Huh, is this going to do anything? It's not crashed, it just seems to be sitting there but there's no disk activity or anything like that. We'll give it another minute. Okay, let's restart the timer and carry on. So, hit a bit of a problem there where on the first um, sort of reboot during the installation, um, it would crash, it would hang. And even though it wasn't sort of hard locked, you know, you could see that the it was still taking input, or looked like it was taking input from the keyboard, nothing was happening. And before anybody goes blaming ME, uh, tried installing Windows 98, and that was doing the exact same thing. Long and short of it, traced it down to a problem with the hard disk, which I've since sorted, and so I've read on the installation uh, from that same point, We've restarted the timer, so effectively we're continuing from where we left off. It's always worrying during this point of the installation where the little magnifying glass stops going around the computer while it has a bit of a think. You know, that, that whole sort of plug and play hardware, especially on you know, the Windows 9X uh, operating systems, you're thinking, has it crashed or is it just having a really good look for some hardware? Why on earth couldn't they make it so the little magnifying glass didn't stop moving and you knew the computer was actually doing something? Now you would hope, given that we're on minimum hardware specification and therefore the hardware in here is all sort of old in inverted commas compared to uh, Windows uh, Millennium Edition when it came out, you would hope that it's already got built-in drivers for all the hardware in this thing, even if they are the kind of basic drivers rather than the sort of fully functional ones. You know, fingers crossed that everything that's in here, it should just work out the box. Um, but we will see when we get there. I mean, straight away, I'm moving the mouse. It's a serial mouse and my little pointer is not moving around. I don't know, maybe it's not installed that bit yet, I'll put the drivers on for that bit. Oh, we're going for another restart. Been about five minutes since the last one. Will it crash this time? Now look at that, straight back into it. And now we get to that point where we've got some sort of slightly better drivers on for the installation, certainly the video card drivers in this case. And we've got that sort of higher resolution screen, um, you know, for the text and, uh, and whatnot. Obviously, if you, if you start the installation um, from Windows in a pre-existing installation, so let's say you were overwriting Windows 95 or Windows 98, you get this kind of higher res stuff for the first part of the installation. Whereas um, if you were just sort of starting from nothing, you end up with that kind of low res uh, part of the installation all the way through to getting to this point. Hey, and the mouse is working now as well. Does anybody know what it's actually doing at this point in the setup? Uh, I think 95 and certainly 98 are the same. You get this bit towards the end of the setup where it just 
well, it says it's updating system settings, and all it says then is, oh, hang on, we've got a cab extract. Um, all it says is component progress and overall progress. I remember it sort of doing control panel help files, etc. But we've already done that bit when you look at that. So this thing is system configuration, where it's it's obviously chewing through some tasks that it's got to do and updating something. But what is it actually doing at this point? If anybody knows, I'm, I'm sure some people out there will, just drop a comment down below and uh, just explain to us, please, what, 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 the, what the setup's actually doing at this point. Okay, finally, estimated time remaining, uh, one minute. Uh, this whole updating system settings has really felt like a sluggish part of the installation. And there's not been a lot of hard disk activity during this. So I'm guessing this has been uh, stuff that's hitting the CPU or the RAM or maybe both uh, quite a lot. So maybe here being on those minimum specs for CPU and RAM, that's where this is really kind of hurting this install progress. Because it, it's the one bit of the install that's really, as I say, it's felt sluggish. It's felt like it's taken longer, uh, you know, l l longer than it longer than it should have done or I, 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 that's maybe not quite the right words but yeah the rest of it felt fine that bit didn't but anyway restart now here we go this should be the final restart I'm just going to say, I wonder why they chose the little drum for that updating system settings bit, but then it, it went and disappeared. A little icon that's got nothing to do with what's actually going on, but yeah, I, I get that it's showing activity is happening, but why the little drum? That was there in uh, Windows 98 as well, wasn't it? The drum, if I remember. And 95, I think. Hey, it's back again. Okay, let's stop the clock there. So, to first desktop, 47 minutes, 44 seconds. A smidge under 48 minutes. I mean, yeah, it's not quick, quick, but that's not bad for installing on absolute minimum, uh, you know, hardware requirements. In fact, I'm just going to do a quick reboot and I'm just going to time how long it is from at the end of BIOS to uh, the desktop coming on and being uh, usable. One sec. So just over 46, 47 seconds call it from end of BIOS until I could get that to start menu to pop up. And yes, that is a brand new installation and all the stuff you install from here on in is only going to make that slower. But again, you're on minimum hardware. What do you want? Uh, I think that's pretty damn good. Uh, this is certainly, uh, you know, boot up speed. One of the areas where um, dropping that sort of uh, real mode DOS support, uh, you know, th that is big time one of the areas that help with this faster boot up speed for Windows uh, ME compared to 98 and 95. Right, let's get in for a closer look. Right, no doubt you're going to have that horrible line pattern on the image now, which uh, I can't see, but you guys can via the camera. So, before we go any further, let's just quickly stick a desktop wallpaper on here. Uh, da, 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 da. Windows Millennium. Which one's that one? A lot of crunching to the hard disk. Yeah, there we go. That's the one we want. Uh, oh, go on. An active desktop. What could possibly go wrong? Ah, oh, there it is. I have to say, I do like the sort of default colour palette if that's the right terminology for Windows ME. I think it worked quite well. It did look very sort of turn of the millennium -y. You know, these, this, the blue, the green, the orange there. Yeah, I think that looks really nice. Um, I was never too sure about the new icons, uh, particularly this sort of rounded, this sort of oval-shaped recycle bin. What the heck was that all about? I, eh, 
if I had to choose, I'd pick the Windows 98 icons over these. Particularly the, um, the, uh, the, the plus desktop theme in the uh, My Computer one, or inside your computer. Was it that one? Was it the more Windows one? Whichever, the one with the nice icons. There you go, that narrows it down a bit. Let's have a look in Device Manager and see if it did indeed get drivers for all the devices. Ooh, no. Don't want to look at Control Panel like that. Uh, I forgot how to do this system. Well, no yellow exclamation marks or question marks or anything like that. So let's have a quick look. Display adapters, yep. Matrox Millennium, it's got those drivers on. And yep. AWE 64, so it's got those drivers on as well, and the basic stuff like, you know, COM port, yeah, we'd expect it to have that, and uh, it's picked up the network card, we've got a, that 3COM uh, Ethlink in there, so, yeah, exactly as you'd expect, it's got all them in, and indeed, it's got the, uh, it's picked up the uh, couple of USB ports on the back of this motherboard, so that, that's good too, I mean, out of all the Windows 9X series of operating systems, uh, ME definitely had the best uh, USB support. I mean, obviously, 95 didn't have that out of the box. But, uh, yeah, that's not to say having the best USB support out of these three was any kind of achievement. Uh, it, it wasn't. But if you do want to use USB devices on um, uh, older stuff, uh, this one is definitely the best sort of out of the box which you'd expect with it being the kind of latest released. But speaking of latest release, there are some people who sort of argue, well, it was, you know, it's just, it just should have been a service pack to Windows 98, you know, or a, a service release, whatever they were calling them back then. It's not really a new operating system. I don't know, I can't get on board with that argument. I mean, for one, what is the difference between a service pack and a new OS? I mean, if you want to argue that, wasn't Windows 98 just a service pack for Windows 95? Uh, I don't know. That's probably a whole new can of worms. I think there's more than enough new stuff in here combined with the new stuff that's going on sort of under the hood of the OS, as it were. That This is definitely more than a service pack. Is it a whole new OS? Uh, I don't know. As I say, it depends where you draw the line, but definitely more evolution than revolution, shall we say. Now, one thing I am keen to try out is, um, if you remember back at the start of the video, I said that we had these kind of minimum system requirements, unless you wanted to run Movie Maker, and in which case you needed a, I think it was a 700 megahertz CPU or whatever it was. Um, I can't remember now, it's been that long since I filmed it. Let's have a look and see if it'll let us start that and do anything with it or whether it actually does any kind of check and says, nope, your CPU's not powerful enough. Oh, it's loaded it up. I will preface this and say, oh, hang on, what's it doing? Oh, no, it's just a welcome. But before that popped up, I was just saying, I've got no idea how to use this thing, so don't expect any miracles here. I've not even messed about with it, so effectively at this point it's just a it's just a video player. Let's see how it handles playing that. I mean, yeah, it's doing it. Look, there's some pixels on the screen. Not very many, but they're there. Um, so, what do we do? Do we just drag these things down and... I mean, it is hitting the disc a lot, and you've got to kind of wait for it to, um, you know, to catch up. But but to say that it's, you, you wouldn't say that it was unusable or that you couldn't do anything. Now, again, don't get me wrong, I'm sure you, you could whack enough stuff um, onto here that you could bring this thing down to a crawl or crash it or something like that. 
But that's no different than what I'm doing on my modern PC. You know, when I'm editing these videos, I can quite easily just bring loads of stuff in all at once and make that slow down and stutter a bit. So I wonder why they said that you had to have, or they recommended whatever it was, a 700 megahertz processor for this. Uh, yeah, it's going to be faster, but it's working. Tell you what, let's save the movie. See what that does. This I can imagine taking a little while if it's got to kind of hit the disc a lot and smoosh these files together and all, and all that lot. I, I'm not an expert on making movies as you've probably gathered. Oh look at that, it's even recommended medium quality. How bad is low quality? Oh 56 kilobits per second, yeah. Let's stick with medium quality and we'll just, oh I don't know, test. Something imaginative like that. And okay please wait while your movie is created so yeah as expected that uh, that took two or three minutes but uh, we'll just close out of this and try playing it back um oh hang on it's uh, do i want to watch it now absolutely i want to watch it now there is a not unsurprisingly large amount of paging to disk happening, uh, not just during this, but during this whole, um, uh, just using this since it's been installed. Um, I feel like if I was to make one upgrade to this um, to try and improve performance, it would absolutely be more RAM. I'd be looking at that before I was addressing more CPU speed or graphics power or hard disk, anything like that. I think probably doubling this RAM to 64 megs or quadrupling to 128, whatever, I think that would have the biggest uh, impact on this system by far. So there we go, installing Windows Millennium Edition on its minimum hardware spec. And you have had a load of problems filming this video, but none of them have been related to this. The actual installing Windows ME, that's gone absolutely fine. It's been pretty painless. Has it been the fastest thing in the world? No. Is it more than usable? Yeah, it's absolutely more than usable. Now admittedly this is best case scenario for usability. The um, more programs you install on here obviously that's going to slow things down a bit and each one of those programs is going to come with its own system requirements. So I'm not going to benchmark any games now or anything like that because that's really testing sort of the hardware spec against the game rather than the OS which you know was the point in this video. So yeah how usable it would be from this point forward that would absolutely depend on what software you were going to use. But in terms of running it on its minimum spec, yeah, it, it, it's fine. It, it's, I think it's, it's, it's better than fine. It's more than usable. Maybe, maybe this would run fine on a Pentium 100 or something like that. I don't know. I certainly wouldn't want to put any less RAM in here, as I've just touched upon. Um, the, the RAM feels like the kind of biggest bottleneck here and the thing that would give this thing uh, the most performance. But yeah. On this older hardware, runs fine. Obviously, it's already got the drivers installed for, for all this kit, so they're fine. Um, so there we go. The actual install and running it, no worries. As for what, um, as for what, what else you think about the rest of ME and the how it worked and what you did on it and how you liked it back in the day, um, well, I'll leave that to the comments. Let's just say that's an argument for another day. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have usual things, give us a thumbs up or drop a comment down below. And if you did use ME back then, let me know what you thought of it. But for now, I'm just going to say thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.